So James, it's really nice to see you again. And thank you for meeting with me just to talk a little bit about clean interviewing. Um, we're going to be doing that training in January uh, 2018 here in California. And I thought it might be interesting for um, people to know a little bit more about clean interviewing, um, where it comes from, kind of um, what it is exactly, uh, where it can be applied, and, and the benefits compared to other interviewing methods. Um, so you've been involved in symbolic modeling and clean for much longer than me, being the creator of symbolic modeling. Um, could you tell me, uh, I, I'm just curious, where, where did clean interviewing come from? Like, Yeah, um, well, it, it, it came out of the work of uh, David Grove's therapeutic approach, which used clean language as its, its main questioning uh, technique. Um, but primarily, David was a psychotherapist, a brilliant psychotherapist. Um, and it, it, it was left to other people, um, myself, Penny Tompkins, and, and uh, other people, to take his work and see how it could be applied elsewhere. And um, fairly early on, people started, without kind of really much conscious thought of applying the clean language question in interview kinds of situations where, uh, where they're trying to gather information yeah. um, about uh, like some people who went into a company, they want to find out what's going on in the company, they went around and interviewed people. What did they do? They, they asked some clean language questions. Um, a, a, a colleague of ours um, was trying to find out about the legacy of conflict in Northern Ireland, and so he interviewed some uh, people from the uh, paramilitaries and the um, armed forces about their experience. Um, yeah. And, and so the, 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 uh, slowly but surely, a number of us kind of go, oh, hello, 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 there's something going on here. This, this could become <laughs> something. That's, that's, um, that's kind of what happened with the, the root cause analysis interviews is, is just my background in clean and symbolic modeling, and I started applying it. So I was really thrilled when I started to see more formalized thinking about the interviewing, and that's something that you've done a lot of work with, really formalizing. How do you know if it's clean? How are you calibrating? Um, yeah. Yeah. So, I was... yeah, that, that, so that, that, yeah, that came out of it. And as always, when you put that kind of thinking in, you start realizing there's a richness and a depth to this that uh, you didn't appreciate at first. But also what you realize is that, um, you know, you don't need to go on a full training in clean language in order to be able to be uh, to pick up some of these skills and, and improve the way anybody interviews. Yeah. Um, what we realized is that people could learn them fairly rapidly and um, that would improve the quality of their interviews very, very quickly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, uh, yep. so what exactly is clean interviewing? How would you describe it? Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, ba it's, it's principally based on the notion of what, it, what is clean. And the, the, the idea of a, the metaphor of clean is that the person who is asking the question is aiming to put as little of themselves into mm. the interview as possible. Now, lots of approaches do that or say they do that, but in, with a, because of the uh, detail paid to play to the uh, language, clean interviewing goes much, much further than uh, most other, any other approach that I've ever seen. And I've seen a lot of transcripts of interviews from different people. And the key thing is that the interviewer does not know how much of their own thinking, their own assumptions, their own metaphors they're bringing in. It's simply unknowingly doing it. Yeah. And, the, and because of that, they can't not do it because they don't know they're doing it. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's clean, just a, with clean language, it prevents it, it, it to some degree prevents you from from doing that. Yeah, so it, so in a way, it's um, yeah, it, it's kind of bringing an awareness and a and a more I'm going to use the word tactical, more tactical thinking um, when you're when you're eliciting information from other people. Um, I, we had a manager attend our training last year, um, the clean interview training. And she's gone back and, and reported to me that 
it not only changed how she does her interviews, but it's changed how she elicits um, information from her um, her everyday workers and helps them kind of find their own solutions. It's It's been a, a real life changer for how she does business. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And well, she didn't know. Well, and, <laughs> well, and especially in business, I think, where there is such a pressure to get things done fast, one of the ways that happens, therefore, is you unwittingly are kind of just suggesting an answer or you, the manager has already got an answer in their mind or the interviewer, and so they ask a question that, just leads the interviewee towards the answer because that's obviously the answer, isn't it? And, yeah. Um, uh, and those are so subtle language. Uh, it can be the structure of the question. It can be a presupposition. It can be a framing. There are four or five key ways in which um, interviewers unwittingly bias the, or at least potentially bias the interview towards answers that they already uh, are making an assumption about. Yeah. And a clean interview attempts to minimize those. You can't stop it entirely, but you can take out a huge amount of them. And then the real key thing is not so much the interview, but it means the data that you end up with, you've got much more, it's more robust, it's more authentic, because you mm-hmm. know it came from them, yeah. not from you. Yeah, yeah. A couple of the areas that I've used the interviewing in is um, root cause uh, analysis interviews and cat program development. And and in those areas, it's it's so easy for the interviewer. The often the interviewer is a specialist in the area where they're they're looking at an event, and it, it's it's so easy for them to just slip their their knowledge into the interview without meaning to. Um, and, and there are a couple of managers that have taken this into the CAP program and found a real difference in letting people, having the skill to begin to let the people devise their own corrective action, something that will work in their environment versus having the corrective action put kind of on top of. Now, you use the interviewing techniques in a couple of other areas. Um, yeah, I mean, I primarily been involved in using it as a, a qualitative research mm-hmm. method in for in uh, you know for a- academics mm-hmm. um, who have been involved in supporting a number of academic programs one in the Czech Republic one in Australia uh, in Britain um, and so the, the, the trying to gather high quality data that meets uh, rigorous academic standards um, it, it's absolutely ideal for that, but and one of the reasons is is because, to my knowledge, there's an additional feature which is called a cleanness rating, which allows you to go back through the interview and look just how clean or how leading was the interview and come out with a quantitative method. To my knowledge, there is no other interview method that allows you to go back and look at that and assess the reliability of the data. Um, gathered during the interview, and so that's a big, big bonus. That's huge. Uh, in, yeah. In that area. Yeah. Yeah. And and even in interviews where there's not um, recording capability, like with a lot of the businesses I work with, they can't record, but they can go back and look at their notes. Mm-hmm. Um, so if they if you're aware of asking the clean questions and staying clean in principle, are you keeping your stuff out? Um, you can st- still go back and look through your notes and see how did how did I do. Um, where were areas that I interjected? Where were areas that I changed the frame or the, even the topic? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. 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 And uh, I mean, so I, I'm not necessarily directly involved in some of these areas, but I know people who, who it's used quite extensively these days as a kind of market research tool. Okay. Um, you know, again, if you want to go out and find out what people really think, yeah. you've got to keep your own <laughs> stuff out of it. Um, <laughs> It's also in focus groups, um, Mm -hmm. uh, for example, gathering information that way. Um, It's particularly now being used as a a kind of a specification tool um, in like um, uh, information technology, gathering the user's requirements, for example. Yeah, the IT. Yeah, Mm. yeah. Um, Uh, it's It's another way. Again, it's similar to what you were saying. There's a specialist in the IT interviewing someone who's not a computer specialist. Mm-hmm. 
and that's the, those are very. Uh, it's very easy for the specialist to start making all sorts of assumptions. And one area where I'm particularly interested in is in, in the health field. Mm. The, you know, there are no more specialists th than doctors. Highly, highly specialized. They have their own language, their own way of thinking. And it's, um, you know, we've all been interviewed by a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> and it's really important, I think, that the patient's um, own way of expressing themselves is preserved yeah. and not lost. Yeah, yeah. And I, I'm wondering, like, so pretty much um, what I found is that pretty much any time, um, any kind of, uh, I, I'm going to say conversation where you're eliciting information from someone else, whether it's a coaching intake, hiring, HR, um, I mean, these, this frame of thinking, this kind of thinking and, and using these questions can be really useful. Yeah. Yeah. And and what surprises a lot of people when they first come across this idea is how even changing a single word in a question can have a <laughs> significant effect on the answer you're given. It it can get down to that level of influence. Yeah. Um unwitting influence. Um and as you said people become much more aware of of their language and instead of just kind of throwing out questions that they, they, they take time to ask questions which are formulated to give the other person the maximum opportunity to answer in any way they want. Yeah. Um, that, that's the kind of key benefit I think of the, uh, of the, of the, of the process. So in a way, Better questions and a different kind of listening lead to more authentic answers, which eventually leads to better qualitative data um, and, yeah, and results, whatever needs to happen from that data. Um, yeah, and I think it's an important point you make that um, what people report is the more they ask clean language questions, the better listener they get, mm -hmm. the better they actually hear what's said. Um, <laughs> It's a strange kind of byproduct that comes out of it. But I reckon one of the reasons is, is that actually once you get the few basic clean language questions, you know, under your belt, easy, just they roll off the tongue quite easily. Mm -hmm. You've got loads of space to, to actually listen to what the person's saying and think about what they've just said without trying to formulate what's the next question going to be or come up with some clever question which yeah. can take... Or, or go, down your, go down your pick list. Exactly, yeah, <laughs> that's right. So th those interviews where you don't necessarily know the kind of information you're going to get, you're, try you're trying to discover that, a discovery interviews, mm -hmm. clean language interviewing is, is really tailor-made for those kind of interviews. Yeah. Um, the, you know, there are some interview techniques where, as you say, you've got a standard set of questions. Well, that's fine, they, they work in that way. Um, but, but other ones were more exploratory, more trying to discover information. Yeah, that's what they're best for. So some of the some of the benefits are becoming a better listener, more accurate listener. Let's let's frame it that way. Um, uh, asking simpler questions that are in context with the information you're actually receiving. Um, so you don't have to be as clever and try to figure out what question is going to happen next. You just need to figure out what context. You're asking mm. in, um, keeping your stuff out. So minimizing assumptions, um, minimizing the influence of your own language. Um, what other benefits? Clean interviewing. Well, there's the the one I said about if you want to go and actually check that the interviews that you've done, yeah, um, meet your own criteria of uh, a high quality interview, uh, a clean interview. You, the, you, there is a method for doing that, um, and even for having someone else do it, an independent reviewer do it. Yeah. Um, the the other thing is that I I think it's really useful where you want in depth information. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it seems to me I, I, I'm not an expert. I don't know about uh, root cause analysis, critical incident interviewing, but what I, what I guess is you want to try and get beyond the kind of surface things that people say 
get them to think deeper about what actually happened and mm -hmm. describe it in more detail. And that's one of the things that clean language allows you to do, to get to that depth of, of uh, information. Yeah, yeah. And, and so um, earlier, um, before we started recording, we were kind of talking about the benefits compared to other interviewing methods. And, and I think what you said about um, being able to really qualify um, and quantify the cleanliness rating is, is a massive benefit over other interview methods. Um, what, what other benefits do you see as compared to? Well, I mean, it's interesting what you said about, um, uh, about that person who went back and said it, it changed the way they ask questions generally, not yeah. just in an interview. Uh, and when I think about the word interview, for me, it's got broader and broader. Mm -hmm. um, you know, <laughs> it, potentially if I stop someone on the street and ask them how directions, <laughs> that's a kind of interview. I'm trying to get some information out of them. Um, and even in that context, I think it's, uh, it's valuable. Mm -hmm. well, I, 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 what happens, it's like uh, many things, is that kind of the, the benefits grow over time. At first, mm -hmm. you know, it seems a bit clunky with the questions. You're not quite sure what to do, but slowly but surely, the more people practice, the more they relax, the more that relaxes the interviewee and allows them to sink into their own experience um, in, a, in a very gentle way. Yeah. And because of that, then a, a, a level of rapport, an interesting level of rapport is built up without trying. Um, and also... Um, what happens in some interviews um, is that there is a kind of belief that I have to encourage the interviewee with things like, oh, good, yeah, that's right, thank you, good, good. Mm -hmm. And actually, I think that's, one, I don't think it's necessary, and two, I think it's already kind of telling the interviewee that they think that some information is better than others. Yeah. It's already kind of sorting it out. Um, and uh, clean language, if you strict to clean language you don't need to do any of that either yeah um and the proportion if you look at the proportion of words asked by an interviewer in a clean language interview they're very small compared to the amount of words asked by the interviewee yeah um, and it seems to me the more the interviewee tells you the more <laughs> likely you're going to get valuable information yeah that's a that's a, a really good point yeah kind of having that that ratio between the interviewers words and the interviewees words um, and also keeping the questions really simple so you're not inadvertently asking two or three questions in in one long bit mm -hmm. um, often you know it's it's and 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 suddenly you've got three questions in one which can be really confusing confusing to the interviewer I mean uh -huh. to the interviewee yeah. yeah, yeah, and and sim and similarly with like sentence structure, you know, yeah. on the on the course we're able to show the kind of s sentence structures where, in the first three words, you can tell it's a leading question. It yeah. doesn't matter what <laughs> comes afterwards. And, yeah. You know, once you get those clear that these are questions that are already slightly just pushing the interviewee yeah. towards a particular answer or restricting their their answers then you can leave those aside and, uh, and, and ask a much more, um, a question that gives the interviewer much more freedom to answer in the way they want. Yeah, yeah. So you and I are going to be doing an interviewing mm -hmm. class, clean interviewing class in January, two days. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's January 17th and 18th uh, here on the central coast of California near San Luis Obispo. Oh. It's Lovely. beautiful, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, and I I think what's nice about our combination of working together is is that we both have been um, using clean interviewing um, skills and thinking in in very diverse areas. Um, you're working with the academics, um, more subjective uh, quality of interviewing, and then I've been working more in the business. And um, getting getting very specific information, like what you were saying, um, uh, deeper information about what actually happened in their perspective. Mm -hmm. and, and, um, and, uh, yeah. and so I think it's really useful we bring those two backgrounds. But I think what we both share, though, is a real desire to make it practical. 
Yeah. Um, and and you know that's that's our primary thing to make it one practical, two that people go away with some really useful uh, learnings that they can apply the next day yeah. straight away. Yeah. Yeah. Even and and like the the interviewer that I was talking about, not just apply it in their interviews, but but also begin to apply that same kind of thinking and skill um, across the board. Yeah. Well, yeah. I've, I've had s several people tell me that um, it's actually changed the way they talk to their children. Mm. Um, because although it's not an interview, you know, parents often want to find out what their kids are up to. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> that leads to all sorts of situations. And, um, you know, it, the more you stay clean when you're asking your children, the more you allow them to answer from, their, from themselves and you find out, they're, they're much more likely to give you the truth about their situation because they're not being pushed to give you the yeah. kind of answers that parents wish they so want to hear. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've had some personal experience with that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so I guess, I mean, I see this um, interviewing that we're going to be doing in January as um, a, a really nice, not just a, a really nice introduction um, to interviewing, but an introduction to clean language. Um, and, and for a way for people to get an idea, is this something that, um, they might want to learn more of? Um, mm -hmm. and also, uh, if they're not in a therapy or coaching field or doing a lot of in-depth work with clients, the clean interviewing is a beautiful way of, of learning clean and applying it to their context, their, mm. their workspace. Um, yeah, that's good. yeah, good point. Yeah. And, and it's beautiful where we are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So for, for those who are watching and listening, James is in the UK and um, I'm on the central coast of California. So um, James Lawley and Penny Tompkins will be coming to California in January um, to join me uh, in uh, quite an extensive training. Um, but today I just really wanted to to have something to share about the clean interviewing because I think it's it's really particular. It's one of the more vital, smaller processes that have come out of clean language and symbolic modeling. And um, I think just can be so useful for people to see what are they doing, um, especially with the, the cleanliness rating that you've developed, being able to really go back and look at something and get clarity on what's happening. Yeah. Looking forward to it. Yeah. Anything else you'd like to add before we finish up here? Uh, I think that's plenty. <laughs> Super. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing you guys in a few months. And um, yeah. great. All right. Talk to you soon. Okay.